around the Yukon, there there was increased activity. There was increased um, alienation of the lands that our people had traditionally used for many millennia. Roads were being built, mines were being constructed. There's a lot of prosperity here, a lot of optimism. Except for Aboriginal people were pushed to the side, felt left out of a lot of those opportunities. And what happened was, um, you know, they, a few of them had also gone off to fight in the Second World War. Um, they were treated as equals. You come back into the Yukon and you're second class, you're not even a citizen, let's say. And so then you have people coming back and, and realizing that, you know, the situation in the Yukon is not as great as it, as it once was, so to speak. And, and that um, people were seeing, you know, their situations through a new light. You know, back in the 60s and the 70s, our leaders and elders of the time absolutely recognized we need to do something. We need to do something here, otherwise, you know, there, there will be nothing for our descendants. The feeling in the air was, we have a right to say what we're gonna, what our future is going to hold. We have a right to educate our children. We have a right to be successful and have economic development and not go to a Minister of Indian Affairs in Ottawa for approval. Um, and I think there was a real uh, sense of pride in who we were as people or who we are as people and that really standing up for where where we're going to be in our our lives 